Hey there, this is uh, Daryl Olson from the Jackson Fishing Team and uh, con continuing on with some trout flies, primarily streamers. Um, I maybe be planning when I'm up in New Hampshire, <clears throat> maybe take a, a day and drive up to the Rangeley Lakes area in Maine and uh, try to fish for some trout up there, maybe landlocked salmon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie up a few... Uh, <clears throat> A few uh, streamer flies and maybe something else a little weird thing but of course these streamer flies should also work for me in um, in New Hampshire as well maybe even up here in uh, the upstate of South Carolina but uh, anyway um, we'll go ahead and we'll get into it and we'll show you what the first fly is the fly uh, that we're going to tie tonight will be um, black nose uh, dace I believe and um, we're gonna tie it you know right now a lot of people will tie it we're using bucktail of white black and and brown you know silver body and some red uh, red yarn but uh, but we're going to uh, substitute or actually go back to old school on there and I'm going to use some uh, polar bear fur um, which you can get from uh, Boone Trading Company. It's a little little spendy but uh, it's got a good uh, good feel to it. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, that'll be the the white part, the black lateral line of the dace is going to be uh, black bear and then uh, this topping is actually going to be uh, the brown part of the bucktail. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started and uh, we'll show you the materials as we go along. <clears throat> the hook I'm going to use is a TMC 300, a size 8. <clears throat> you can uh, tie this anywhere from a size 8 down to a 12 and uh, we're going to go ahead and debarb the hook <clears throat> and uh, if, if you can't find that hook any uh, the hook that I'm using is uh, 6x x x long streamer hook and uh, you could probably tie it on a four, th four six maybe a seven you know th four four length whatever well, I'm gonna be tying it on a on a six XL and the thread I'm gonna use I'm staying with uh, I don't know a, a, a ten knot in black And we're going to go ahead and just start this uh, probably about two eye widths back. And we'll take it back to the bend of the hook. <clears throat> the next material we're going to tie in is going to be uh, 
some uh, red uh, yarn. I'm only going to, normally it's like a four ply, I'm only going to use uh, a two ply on there and I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this in the full length of the shank. Just try to, trying to keep uh, keep the body about the same diameter or smoothness or whatever you want to call it so there's no lumps in there. And we're going to try to keep this on top of the hook. I tied one earlier, it's probably the one you saw the photo of, that used all four strands and it just looked too, uh, too thick for me, the tail did. So we're going to, I took two strands out on this one. And we'll take this back to uh, to where the barb is there. On there, and then we're going to cut it off just past the bend of the hook. Don't pull on it too tight, it'll maybe get too short. It's not a long tail. And uh, if you want, you can fluff it out or take a little comb. To give it a little fluff there. Next we're going to do is we're going to advance the thread forward again. <clears throat> and we're going to put some oval tinsel in. Some, I'm using uh, some medium oval tinsel. This will be for the ribbing. And again, so that the body doesn't have much uh, buildup or high spots in it somewhere, we're going to tie this in the full length of the full length and try to keep this one on the bottom. Take this back to where our thread ended there on the tail. Next, I'm going to use some uh, gold, silver, mylar tinsel. And this I've got large just because I have it. You know, in order to get the silver silver body, we're going to tie this in the gold side out. And then we're going to advance our thread forward while we make this body. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to put some turns so that the edge of the tinsel matches up to the other edge 
without leaving any gaps. You know, if you did a little overlap, you probably could get by with that, but then you might get some bumps or things like that. Back in the old days when they used like a metal tinsel, not mylar, you could, they could just feel that kind of fall in place. You could hear like a little click, I'm, I'm told, you know, I'm not that old, so. I'm only going off what I've read in books. But you could probably still find that older tinsel somewhere. trim off this we'll give it a few extra wraps just so and then we'll counter wrap this ribbing and you want somewhere I don't know maybe six seven eight wraps or whatever looks good to you, as long as they're evenly spaced is the important thing. I six, so I make seven. And I'll go one time around here. Lock that in and we'll clip this off. And then uh, we're going to do some, the white part of the wing. Um, so it's pre-1972 polar bear fur that's kind of important. And again, it's from uh, Boone Trading, Trading Company. And what's nice about that, this is that, I don't know if you can see it on there, but it, it kind of is uh, got a shine to it somehow compared to, um, let's say, if you were going to use... Uh, use a white bucktail. It, to me, it, the white is too white. Polar bear seems to have a little cream in there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab some of that. And I, from my understanding also, the polar bear, when it gets wet, it looks more translucent than the bucktail white, white, you know, more opaque when it comes to the bucktail. Um, you know, so I think if you decided to, to find some of this to, to buy, it'll you'll, you'll probably like prefer it over the, the white bucktail, but who knows? And I'm going to try to stack it. And then again, when you're pulling it out, you want to pull it out in the direction that it's going to lay. And uh, we don't want it to go maybe just slightly past our uh, our buck or our red 
red tag there or the red on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off. And if you want, you could just trim it after you tie it on if you want. And I'm going to kind of give it a, a loose somewhat of a loose wrap. And I'm going to make sure that I'm sitting there on top, top of that, top of that hook. And then just to make sure it all bunches up right. The next material we're going to use is uh, some black bear wing material, natural black. kind of kind of looks like this and uh, and again we're not going to take too much here this is basically that black lateral line of the black nose days and uh, also try to remove any of the under fur And you could use uh, skunk too, the the black fur from a from a skunk. And again, I'm gonna. Pull it out the way it goes. And this here probably not as long as the white, but On this it's going to be right on the top top of the hook just like the white you know and then make make sure you're pulling up it'll uh, kind of keep it there instead of pulling pulling down Yeah, it looks pretty good. The next material, you know, your white bucktail, natural bucktail, and we're going to just take take the fibers of the back, the brown fibers. Again, we're going to kind of take out any of that under fur. And we'll try to stack that a little bit.
and we're going to place that probably just about as long. It can be a little shorter than the black. that brown so it's just a black head not looking like a very good head there And we'll whip finish. Snip that off. A little head cement. a black nose dace using polar bear, black bear, and then deer bucktail if you uh, like to do it that way. Like I said, you can also substitute using all bucktail and the brown, black, and, and white. All right, well, that's the black nose dace. I hope, uh, hope you tie some up. That might even be good for brim. Besides trout, you know, it's designed primarily for, uh, my understanding, landlocked salmon and uh, wild rookies. But uh, I'm sure it'll catch browns and rainbows and maybe you tied it on a bigger hook closer to uh, to a size 8. Maybe you want to go 6 you could probably get by and make it a good smallmouth fly for that or maybe even red-eye bass who knows anyway that's enough on that try to get get this uh, out there for you guys hopefully uh, you will uh, give it a try it's a pretty easy tie it's a classic fly and uh, we'll see you on the water good luck with it